Okay, I think we can get back to the presentation. Uh, I'm a little bit terrified by the number of people I see on the seats. <laughs> uh, okay, I was showing an example uh, of why we need concepts in according to the error message that the compiler prints if we will cal call some templated function with a parameter that doesn't fulfill some requirements. I also started explaining one of the examples that now can be used in your library code or software program uh, just to help the people that encounter that error to find where it is. And one of the solutions is called attack dispatching. And in that solution, we have some internal function that for this particular example of std sort function, beside those two first parameters that represent a range to be sorted, also takes a third parameter that is uh, called std random access iterator tag. This is used just for the providing some overload function that will be valid only if iterator category will be the same as the std random access iterator tag, or at least it will be convertible to that tag. Then, when we will prepare such internal sort function, we can use it in a public std sort and extract, extract iterator for the, for, from the type that is provided to that function. The extraction of that iterator category can be done with the iterator traits because, as standard says, for each iterator we need to implement such traits that inform the compiler of what type the iterator is. This improves an error mes a message a little bit because now we are seeing that when the std sort function will be used with a wrong type or non-random access iterator, compiler will inform us that there is no overload that is taking uh, our internal sort with, with some uh, different, uh, different iterator tag. Yet this is also a little bit mysterious because where we are seeing the public std sort function that takes two parameters, we may not be aware that there is an internal function that also takes three parameters and the third one is the iterator tag. So this may help, by, but from my experience, you will also need a time to find where the error occurs and why it occurred. With concepts, we will have the ability to state that given type in this particular function need to fulfill some valid, some, some thing that we are calling a concept here. I will explain what what the concept is in second part of the presentation. For now, you need to know that the compiler will generate a code for this templated function when the random access iterator concept will return true. Otherwise, it will print a clear error stating that the sort function cannot be used because some particular concepts, in that case, random access iterator concepts, isn't fulfilled, and it also states you why this concept isn't fulfilled. This is just an example. The error message is based on how the particular concept is implemented, and also I will explain you how it is working in second part of the presentation. Second example is uh, very common if you are a library designer. Imagine that for some particular reason you want to implement a constructor in your container that take a range and you want to copy all the elements from the range to that container. And you may want to have two versions of this constructor in your code. One version for input iterator, the second version for a forward iterator. You want to have two implementations because input iterate, one of the properties of the input iterator is that you can iterate over the range only once. So you cannot predict how many elements the range is containing. The standard example is, for exa is when you are std eStream iterator and the user is typing numbers from the console. It can type 10, 100, 1000, or 10,000 elements. So in the body of the constructor, you cannot pre-allocate memory. You just need to allocate just enough the memory as you are taking the elements. 
the forward iterator have additional property that you can easily compute how many elements the range represented by the forward, it forward iterator contains. So you can pre-allocate enough memory to copy the whole range and copy. This is usually faster when you are copying a lot of, uh, a lot of elements. Currently, also, we have a solution that we can use to solve this problem. This is called Sfinae. Substitution failure is not an error. And some meta function like std enable if or std is convertible. In the version for the input iterator, or sorry, in the version for the forward iterator, we need just to check that given template parameter type is convertible to an input iterator. In the version for an uh, input iterator, we need to also check that this given particular type is convertible, I'm sorry, for input iterator, but is not convertible to std forward iterator, yes? Okay. And from my experience, I see that when programmers are seeing std enable if in their code, they are thinking that this is kind of voodoo magic, even those experienced one need some time to investigate uh, what the code is really doing, where are the constant expression that are computed at compile time, how they are converted, etc. It's very easy to make a mistake, for example, when you are trying to replace std is convertible with the std is same. This is a very common mistake, even for experienced programmers that uh, implement, it, for example, boost library. And the problem is that it's very hard to write such constraint when you are trying to implement a function that take more than one template parameter, like std translate, for example, when would you, you would like to check that some parameters are input parameters, some parameters are output, and there is also some mm, functor that does the change. Again, with concepts, we'll have a chance to uh, overload particular methods, and compiler always will choose the overload that is the most constrained. This will also be explained in the second part of the presentation. Just, I, I just want to know that you are aware of the problem. The last example, I think the best one that represents the need for a concept is uh, the situation when you are writing some wrapper type for for, for your type. This uh, may be, for example, an std optional or boost optional. And you want those wrapper you are writing have some prepared, some have very particular properties, like you want it to generate a copy constructor only if the type it wraps also have copy constructor. And you want it to generate a move constructor only when the type it writes have move constructor. There is no easy way to do it now, mainly because constructors, copy and move constructor, according to the C++ standard, cannot be templated. If the constructor is templated, that it means it won't never be treated as copy or move. Implementation are found uh, in the internet, like uh, copy move constraint optional that is available on GitHub, use uh, implementation dispatching based on the property of a wrapper type. So when a wrapper type implements a copy constructor, we dispatch, implement, we dispatch the code to the partial implementation that supports the copy construction. When wrapper type uh, implements or have move constructor, we dispatch uh, the call to the partially specialized code that have a move constructor. It's a, whole, it's a very mm, long code that I would don't want to describe it because I would need a lot of time, probably another 30 minutes or so. But if you are interested, you can Google copy, uh, copy move constraint optional and see how many lines of code you need to write something like that. And with concepts, we need also two additional lines that will state that for this particular method, copy constructor, we require that the given type is copyable or movable, and compiler will do the generation for us. Very nice. Okay, I gave you three examples that hopefully illustrate the problem we now have with generic pro programming. 
I show you three solutions that you are currently that you can currently use, and I hope you are all thinking that those solutions aren't very beautiful. And also, I showed you some examples of the code that could use C++ concepts that I hope you are thinking it is more readable and more, more nicer to the writer of the code and to the reader of the code. Now let's go on a trip to see what those concepts really are. So C++ concepts are a technical specification, which means it's an addition to the standard. In 2040, they probably will be accepted, but it doesn't mean that it will be a standard. It just means that the C++ conformant compiler may implement it, but won't need to, to implement it to be called a conformant C++ compiler. The reason why some people stated that we need a C++ concept is that because we need a way to improve, of improve our error message when we misuse a templated code in a program. And we also need to have some way to overload method, overload templated method based on what requirements the given type have. What is very important about the concepts is that they doesn't introduce any runtime performance. All the computation are done in compile time. This is very important. And it's also very important that it doesn't increase binary size in any matter. So when we have a code that uses concepts and we have the code that doesn't use concepts, the first one will be as big as the second one. There is no additional uh, instruction that are generated. You saw that example. This is constraint uh, sort function. Let's assume that this is an STD sort. Uh, in difference to the traditional templated function, we have a keyword requires that informs the compiler that we'll have a concept's name after that. The random access iterator in that case is the concept's name. It is, an imp it is a const expression function that is implemented by a library designer that checks some expression or requirements and return either true or false. If this function returns true, the compiler will use it in the code. If this function ret returns false, the compiler will print clear error message. There are also other ways to write a concept. Here are another one. There is a constrained type specifier random access iterator that, that we can use instead of a type name of a, or a class keyword. And compiler will generate from this signature the signature you are seeing in the first line. And also, what for me is the best version of how we can write concepts is a terse notation when we don't have traditional template type name introduction, and we can use constrained type in the place where normally would be a template parameter. The compiler also will generate a templated function from this code, but we are free to, or we don't need to write a template type name before. So as for now, we, are, we know that we can use uh, concepts for a method or method definition or declaration template function, and of course there is more to be. I think that uh, one of the best things is that we can use these concepts in the lambda definition, so now we have some additional step. We either have strongly tipped lambdas where we are stating to the programmer we're expecting an it. In C++ we can have also generic lambdas with C++14. We can have generic lambdas when we are stating that we will accept any type that programmer will provide. And with concepts, we'll have the middle step when, when we could say that we will accept any type that you will provide only if, for example, it fulfills the equality comparable concept. But there is more than, type, but more than that. We can use concepts for a class definition. We can use concepts for normal function, partial specialization of the template, template aliases, and variable template. 
the usage of the concepts in that case is, is very similar to the one I just presented, so I won't describe it to you. Just be aware that there is possible to use concepts pretty everywhere in your code. This is the implementation of random access uh, iterator concepts. I went to a shortcut here because for the implementation I use type traits. This is the information for you that when you are implementing such concepts, you can use existing mechanisms to uh, check the requirements on a given type. What is important in, the, in that example that the concepts, as you can see, starts with the keyword concept, but to be honest, this is a normal const expression that have some uh, restriction, restriction rise on it. The concept cannot be a function that takes any parameter. It is a templated function that cannot also be uh, specialized. So we have only one function of given, templated function of given concept, and we are sure that none of the programmers will write a specialization that somehow change the semantics of the concepts have. But the technical specification also gay will give us another way of specifying a concept. Here on, on the example you can see a code that for now may look strange for you, but is very similar to the previous one I showed you. After specifying a concept name, we can specify something that is called a requires exp expression. And the requires expression is kind of uh, expression that <coughs> states what restrictions are stated on a given type. Here, are is, here is a very simple restriction that for two introduced parameters like f and args, check if uh, the call if for, for this given args is a well-formed expression. If this expression is well formed, well formed, the compiler will return true. If, if it is not well formed, the compiler will return false. We can go a little bit further. We can not only check if some expressions are well formed, like here on checking if a given type is uh, or have equality operators. We can also check that the result of this operation is convertible to some specific type. In this example, if the result of the operation is convertible to bool. If it is convertible to bool, that means that the concept is fulfilled. If not, it means that not and the function cannot be generated. And also, we can use previously defined concepts in the body of the concept we are creating now. So we can create a compound expression that gave us the ability to mm, sum all the concepts we already, have, we already have in our program. Okay, one of the last examples I would like you to share, and I think is one of the best thing in the concepts, is the partial overloading on the, of the templated function. I would like you to show this example based on the STD advanced template function that takes some iterator and advance it by the number of steps the programmer will give. Currently in the STD library, we have only one, one advanced function and three implementations that are chosen by the tag dispatching on the iterator category the given iterator have. Now with, with the concepts, we'll have the ability to have more than one function. We will specify one function for each iterator type, one implementation for each iterator type, and compiler will always choose the most constrained one. The most constrained one means that if, for example, we'll, we'll give eStream iterator for the advanced function, compiler will check that the most constrained one is the advanced function for input iterator, so it will choose it. When we pass the iterator that is, for example, bidirectional iterator, then the compiler will see that the most constrained function is those for the bidirectional iterator, and will choose it. And the same for the third example with the random access iterator. Besides uh, 
the mechanics of the concepts, there are also, also some researchers that try to check what concepts we already have in a STD library and to write an implementation of it. There are some fundamental concepts introduced like equality comparable, movable or copyable. There are some concepts introduced for iterators like if that iterator is, is input iterator, if that iterator is output iterator. And also you, the programmers also proposing the concepts for ranges like if this range is sortable or mergeable. Okay, from my side, I just told you everything I wanted to. I hope I interested you and you will dig into those concepts a little bit more in your home. If you are interested, you definitely should look at the current working draft of the C++ concept. This is a N4205. Also, I highly, highly encourage you to uh, read a concept design for the STL. This is a great high-level overview of how concepts are working, what concepts we already have in the STD uh, library. Also, there is a very nice concept wiki page and the uh, origins library. This is the library written by the creator of the con one of the creators of the concepts. You can play with it to see how those concepts are working in the real code. And also there is a G++ branch now you have the link there that implements almost the whole technical specification. So you also could check how this is working for you. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have some question, I will be happy to answer them now. Uh, yes, I think that those slides will be on the internet. There are a live streaming to the YouTube and it will be available offline, but I'm not sure when. Uh, one more. Yeah, um, I have a question. Uh, how does the compiler choose the um, most constrained, constrained one? Okay. So the question is how the compiler choose the most constrained version of the overload. So there are rules in the technical specification that are called partial template ordering. And also this, there, there are rules that tell the compiler how he should compare a concepts. I cannot explain them without uh, having a technical specification to look at because those rules are very complex. And so I can tell now, yeah, okay. Uh, so you mentioned also that it's not required by the standards uh, for the compiler to conform to, to this specification. So my question is, is it worth it? Because if you want to create a portable uh, library, then is it true that in fact you must provide two implementations or some, uh, some forest, unreadable, unreadable forest of if devs and such things? Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. For C++ 14, this will be a great pain because currently there is only a, C, a G++ branch that have the concept implementation. As far as I know, the client doesn't have this concept implementation. It has some or own that were proposed previously. But hopefully when the C++ 70 will be accepted, then the concept will be part of the language. So then all the compilers will need to implement them. Right, thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> can, can I pass some arguments in this concept stuff? Because it looks Uh, no, f the concepts is the construct person function that doesn't take any arguments. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, said that uh, the size of the binary will be in the, is the same, right? But yeah. is it possible that compiler will generate more, more optimized code, or this code will be smaller because of the usage of concepts? 
yeah, the code may be smaller and may be better optimized, but it doesn't the job of the technical specification to describe it. It's just the job of the programmers that implement the compiler to use it in a way that it can improve either binary size of the speed or, or the speed of the program. Yeah. Is there any reason why you can I'm sorry, I can you. see. You. Ah, okay. Is there any re technical reason why you can specialize uh, uh, concepts for specific types? I don't found any. Uh, there is a great explanation from Andrew Shatton that saying that if you could specialize the concepts, that it means for some type it just meant one and for other the second. So the somatic information wouldn't be the same for any time you are using, but would be different for some type you are you were specializing, yes. So you for example could special if you could specialize a quality comparable concept, then you could say that some types that aren't really equally comparable are in your code, yeah. Some of these concepts are, are not a uh, new idea. I think I knew no. this uh, for some time. What's the problem with this? Uh, why it's going so slow? Uh, well, I think that the first idea of the concepts was raised a few years ago. There was work on the standard before the C++11 to introduce the concepts a little bit different than those I described it. But the people that are, that are standardizing the C++ told that in past version of the concepts it would be too too much of burden in the compiler to implement it yes there were there were requirements that the programmers weren't sure if this makes sense to implement at that particular time so before accepting the C++11 the old version of the concepts was dropped and the people started to searching another a lighter solution for the problem, yes. So the concept that I described today in the first version was uh, called Concepts Light. Okay, okay so I have a question. Uh, you okay. told that concepts can introduce some new kinds of optimization <coughs> to the compilers. Uh, no. Any example of that? No, no, I didn't uh, told that. I told that programmers that um, write a compiler can, or a library, can write those library in a way that it will be more optimized. Like, for example, this example with a vector we have for forward iterator and the input iterator. Okay, okay. And but uh, now it also can be optimized with traits, no? no? Yeah, it's, it can. So, okay. so, okay, so the concepts okay. won't introduce Okay, so I wo wasn't uh, so specific, yeah. Okay, okay. thanks. Uh, so one question. Did you make some research on the compilation time impacts? Uh, no, I didn't because the implementation in G++ is, I would say, in a beta state. So it's not complete, it is almost complete, but I don't think that it was checked in the compilation for the performance yet. Yeah? I will want to do it when it will be officially released as a part of G++ 410, possibly. And another thing is uh, that you showed uh, the third uh, source. Um, okay. It, ah. it, it was not templated, yeah? You, you showed that you can put the concept inside like uh, yes. a parameter type, yeah? And uh, what is the definition? How, how does it look, this, 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 uh, this type? That I, I don't get it. It's the, the sort is not templated, but it's templated. Yeah. Yeah, because so when the com when the compiler will uh, notice that it have a constraint type specifier, it will check if given constraint it, it exists is existing, and then will generate a templated function or will change the signature, so it looks like classical template function. Yeah, it's a new ways of uh, writing template functions. 
Okay, but uh, you didn't show how the concept was created for something like this. Yeah, I didn't because show. This, just this is an, an, another name, yeah, for, for, for this. It's not the random, random access iterator, but it was random access iterator or something like this. Yeah. You have to define this. this yes, yes, yes. And That's true. I, I, I'm really interested how, how does it look to. Uh, I this. Yeah, I think that I showed the random access iterator concept a little bit l later. So okay, this is how you are defining it. Uh -huh. And when you are defined such concept, then you can use it in the constraint type specifier. So the okay. third version from the example you are seeing. Okay, so you, so you don't pass the, the type? No, 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 no. That, that, that means that According the to the technical specification, the compiler will know how to convert one to the other. Okay, and when I use two types, like T1 and T2, and I want to the first parameter. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it can be a problematic, and I don't think the technical specification allowed for now for that, but I'm not sure. I would need to check it before answering. New standard C++ 14 introduces new uh, lambda, generic lambda, yeah. which uses auto uh, types. And my question is, how does our concept refer to these auto types? Can it be used in lambda, in generic lambda expressions? Uh, if, for example, if in lambda you can, I don't know. Um, so you're asking if. Uh, is there any way to use concepts to define a generic lambda that, that accepts all the types? Um, yeah, exactly. Well, the question is that, um, can I specify, like for example, two variants of lambda with using auto types and concepts? Uh, it's a good question. I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah, probably yes. But <laughs> uh, also, I would need to check that in the technical specification. Basically, basically can um, concept be used only with templates? Or with, I don't know if there, would be, uh, there were any sketches made on that. But no, it can be used to in, in any code that can be templated. So it can be used with uh, template function, template classes, generic lambdas, and so on. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, have many template parameters for just one. Okay, concepts can can have more than one parameter, template parameter, but not uh, can can't have any arguments of the function. Yeah. No. This is also overriding function based on the uh, requirements that the type have. Again, this is the example with the input iterator and forward iterator and some constructor that accept range for this iterator pair. No, also for performance improvement. Because you cannot pre-allocate enough memory in case of the input iterator. You cannot know how many elements the Range represented by two input iter iterators have, because yeah, yeah, it's it's okay, but no, no, there is a reason, but you 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 always have one more than one way of doing something that, and you can implement such differentiation with the std enable if, for example. But for me, it would look nicer if you have a concept, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that. Yeah, I think that the doubt is the thing that we all can have, and we need to decide personally what we want to use and what we don't want to use. So, yeah. I, I think that this is not the scope of my presentation. I just demonstrated where the concepts are. Uh, I think that time will show which solution will be accepted by the community later. Yeah. I believe we have time for one final question to the okay. speaker.
All right, Kai, one question about concepts. Can I have the same function template signature, but different concepts, so different constraints? Yes, this is a mm, template function overloading with concepts, yeah? So you can state that one overload of the templates needs a type to be random access iterator, and the other one needs a type to be input iterator. It's perfectly fine. Okay, so big thanks to the speaker for the presentation. Thank you very much.